is a modular helmet, often referred to as a flip front helmet for obvious reasons. A lot of people like to use this kind of helmet because it gives them access to fresh air. If you're stopped at the traffic lights in hot weather, you can lift the visor and it gives you that freedom to be able to, to breathe a little bit more easily. However, there is one issue that motor vloggers have with using a modular helmet and that is how to connect a camera to the chin of a modular helmet. And if you're having that issue or would like to know how to overcome that issue, this video is for you. This is a helmet I prepared earlier. This is the helmet I use for, for motor vlogging. As you can see, it's a modular helmet, flip front helmet. I really like this helmet a lot. It's my newest helmet. And you might notice that out here on the front, I have one of these little GoPro connectors. And into that GoPro connector, I put what I call my Meccano set. The goes up and down with the, with the visor, but it does have uh, a problem with that, but it's the best one that I've found. What I, what I use is, I use my little, my little Meccano here that I've, I've made up and it connects into the helmet like, 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 like that. <laughs> no problem. So it, as you can see from this setup here, my little Meccano, I've got some arms that come around to the front. These are all made up and I can fit my GoPro camera onto here. I would do that, but I'm recording with it right now. So the GoPro camera comes into here, made up with all of these arms, and you can screw it in. Now, one of the things I like about this setup is that I can position it so that when I'm wearing the helmet, I can see the camera. I can see when it's recording, and I can see when it's stopped recording, and I can also see when it needs a new battery. And the other advantage of having it here right in front, well, not right in front of my vision, but sort of a little bit lower, of course you need to look past it, is that I can unscrew it, take the camera out, I can change the battery. It's a bit of a hassle, as a lot of you know, when you have the, uh, the GoPro mod, but I can put it back in again. I don't need to take my helmet off, change the battery, put it in my pocket, and, and, and away I go. So how do we do this? There are a number of fittings that you would need to buy. So let's have a look at where we can get these fittings and see how we can put it all together. This is the Meccano arm setup that I made in order to be able to bring the camera around from the side of the helmet to the very, very center. And in order to do that, you do need a few bits. You need the base, which is swivel. You need a curve bring it around. These curves you can get longer or shorter, a straight page, another straight, another straight, and this final component up the top connects to your GoPro media mode. Now, when you set this up on your helmet, you need to be able to set it up so that your camera lens sits directly down the center. Now with a GoPro, the lens is set a little bit off to the side. And if you set the camera in the center, then your lens is just a little bit off to the side. So you want your lens to be right down the center of your, of your helmet. And when you set this up, you'll need to be able to position the camera body itself to allow you to be able to get your hand up inside to be able to pull the lever to lift your, your chin. And also it needs to be far enough away from your helmet so that you can lift the visor. There are a number of these sorts of things available online, but from what I can see, the camera body is too close to the helmet and will restrict you getting your hand up on the inside to be able to, to pull the lever. So the best way to be able to do this is to buy these components and make it up yourself. And also when you do that, you can also set it up so that your microphone cable can plug into your camera at the best possible point for you. Here's my microphone here. It connects to the lead, of course, which goes down and out from the, the lining back around. And you can see that I've got a fair amount of, of slack happening there. I've never had the lead jam, been no issue at all. Um, it's not 
it's not really elegant, it's not that pretty, but it works and that's what really, really matters at the end of the day. Now, the parts you can get online for this are these sort of bits here. I've just put these together um, so that I can keep them in order. I've got another box of these things, as, as you probably do as, as well. So um, these are readily available online. They're cheap. They're plastic, yep, they're, but they're strong. They seem to be as good a quality as the GoPro components themselves. They also fit together well with the GoPro components. They tighten up. They don't move. No problems. I've been using them for a while now and I've had no issues with them at all. So where do we get these online? Let's have a look. However, if you would prefer to buy something that is already made up, there are a number of options that are available online, but for one reason or another, they may not be quite suitable for what we're trying to achieve with our modular helmet mount. Let's check them out. If we look at this setup we have here, you can see how close the camera is to the helmet chin. And if you can imagine this on a modular helmet design, it would be very difficult to be able to get your hand up between the camera and the helmet to access the, the lever. However, if you look at my helmet here, you can see how far the camera is away from the front of the helmet. Plenty of room to be able to access the lever and plenty of room to be able to lift the visor as well. Plus also you can look down into the camera and you can actually see what's happening. One thing that does need to be mentioned is that if you're riding a, a cafe racer style machine and your head is a little bit forward, you will need to tip the camera back just that little bit, which will bring it closer to the visor, but not really closer to the lever. Being closer to the visor may hinder the visor opening, but it's a small price to pay for being able to have a camera on the front of a modular helmet. So where do we get all these fittings and parts? I get mine from AliExpress and I'm not promoting AliExpress as such because there are a number of similar sites such as uh, Alibaba, Wish, Light in the Box, Fish Pond, etc, etc. Now these sites are what they call e-commerce sites and what the overall site does, for example AliExpress, they have a number, quite a number of smaller retailers who sell through their site. So that when you go into their site you will see that there are quite a number of, of sellers and when you choose something from individual sellers you put them into your cart and then when you click buy the message goes out to each of the individual sellers they put all their bits together they send them to Alibaba and then Alibaba puts them into a big box and then sends them to you. Now the quickest I've had is probably less than a week from China to Australia and the longest was over four weeks and something to remember when you're buying through AliExpress or a similar site is that if you put individual items into your box from a number of individual sellers, Alibaba waits until each one of those sellers has sent your item to them before they send the lot. And I think the longest I had was four weeks and I bought from five different sellers. And I think what has happened there is that Alibaba had to wait for them all to arrive, then sent them. So a little tip is if you're going to, to buy from AliExpress or similar. See if you can make all your purchases from the one individual seller within the store. It's understandable that when you look at the items on these e-commerce sites and look at the price they're asking for them, you have to ask, how is this legitimate? How can they be selling things so cheaply? But I've bought a number of one cent, two cent, five cent items. And, and they've been fine. They've always turned up and the quality has been good. They come in little plastic packets within the bigger box and you rat through and you, and, and you find them and, and they're there. 
I'm not suggesting that if you buy from one of these sites everything will go well, but do your homework and make a decision and, and try it out and, and buy some and see how it goes. And my hope for you is that it all will go well as it has done for me. In finishing, I'd like to go through some pros and some cons of this kind of setup on your, on your helmet. First of all, we'll go through the, the cons. Um, one of the issues I have found is that depending on where you put your camera and depending on the bike you're, you're riding, it can obstruct the view of the gauges under some circumstances. I haven't found it to be uh, a, a real problem at all, and it, but it's something that you might need to consider. The other thing is that you can't really have the helmet chin up when you're recording. Well, you can, it's just that you can't see on the video where you're going. But if you want to get some nice views of maybe overhead clouds that look really good, or maybe some views of underneath a bridge, or even if you see some cool birds flying overhead, you can get some really good shots going straight up. Um, with the chin up and the helmet and the camera on, you can bump things that are overhead. I've found that that has happened. And the last thing is that it looks looks a little bit odd. It's um, not the most aesthetically pleasing setup, but it works really well. On the pro side, which is way more important, it is a centre mount and you get a true rider's view of the road. Also, where you put it, you can see the screen, you can see when the battery needs changing, you can see when it's on, you can see where it's off, and you can actually see what you're recording. You can adjust it so you get a good view of the gauges of the bike, or you get a good view of the road, and, and you can work it out depending on the view you're using on your camera. And thirdly, you can change the battery without taking your helmet off. You know what it's like, you, you, take, you take out the screw and you, you, you can't get the screw back in and you fiddle with it, with it in the front of the chin and out just that little bit further, you can see where to put the screw. And I found that to be a real advantage. So if you decide to go down this track, I hope it'll work for you. Um, it's worked for me. I really like it where it is. And it's just so convenient. I hope this video has been helpful for you and if you found it helpful and informative you might like to give a thumbs up and maybe even subscribe down below. That'd be great. So until next time, ride well, go well, be well. Love this truck.